Hello everyone, Rich Nance here with your Defensive Tactics Technique of the Week. Today we're going to be looking at ASP techniques. We're going to look at some techniques that you can use with your ASP to uh, have a, a pretty telling effect on your adversary. One of the things you need to consider is the drawing of your ASP. Um, you could step back as you draw, you could step forward as you draw, depending on uh, your distance from the bad guy. You could also use your left hand to draw if you needed to. Right now we'll look at a, a strong side draw, and what I'm going to do is step back slightly when I do that. I'm going to put this hand up, get back! That way I'm able to get the, the baton out into a position that I could do something with it from. This is keeping him at the right distance that I want. Now ideally, here I have my, my uh, strong leg, my baton leg back, and that's the way I was taught in the academy, was to deliver strikes in this manner here. But you're going to find that if you have your baton side forward, it's going to give you a significant reach advantage, which is always beneficial because you can stay further away while using your baton as a barrier between you and the bad guy. You also get actually, believe it or not, more power using this baton side forward because your body is not hindered by your hip rotation. So it feels a little awkward at first, but it does work very well. Again, this hand is important, but what I want to do is I want to just torque my hips here, and I'm just going to deliver a basic strike here like this, striking with that part of it there. A common follow-up may be to pull through here, turn the baton over, and strike that way. Now, the way you hold the baton is important. If I were to strike incorrectly, something like this, it's very possible for me to disarm myself. I've done it in training and it's more than a little embarrassing. So when I'm delivering an inward strike, think of delivering like a karate chop with your palm up. And when you do an outward strike, it's palm down. So with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of speed, it'll look like this. Strike there, strike there. Notice then this hand is up to protect. I'm turning, I'm not just striking with my arm, but I'm turning my body into my strikes there and following through. If I wanted to strike lower, I don't bend at the waist, I lower my hips to deliver these strikes to the leg. You can also deliver strikes at somewhat of a downward angle. So if you're to orient the bag upward, we'll show that. So here, it would look like this coming down at about a 45 degree angle, just like that. Being careful not to come straight overhead because we know what that's going to result in. So these would be aimed at like the clavicle area. Um, also, that same strike works well. Drop the bag. If your hands are up, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to hit your hands to take those out of the fight because now what are you going to fight with if I hit those? One of the things to consider, that strike we just showed works well to strike the suspect's hands. If you think about it, the hands are likely what's going to hurt you. They're what's going to produce a weapon or they're what's going to punch you. So striking the hands is a very effective technique. There's also small bones here, and, and it's gonna hurt like you know what if you get hit in the hand with a baton. So whereas someone, especially someone that's much bigger, you may strike their common peroneal area, you may not have the same type of effect that you will get out of striking someone's hand. Right. Um, so let's talk real quickly about target areas. This is a less lethal weapon. We're gonna target you know, arms, hands, legs, uh, the torso is okay. You want to stay away from the, the upper chest for obvious reasons. You want to stay away from the head unless you can uh, justify the use of deadly force. So uh, primarily we're looking at extremities. And again, when you go down lower, you sort of become more susceptible. So everyone wants to strike the legs with a baton. I mean, that's fine you, as long as you bend your knees and stuff. But you're also more susceptible than if you're more upright and striking striking the, the hands and the arms. And what you can do is you can come back this way and deliver the same strike again, or you can come through and deliver the same strike from a different angle. One important thing is that if he's resisted to the point that I resort to the use of an asp, at some point I have to disengage and give him a chance to not keep getting hit. You know, if, if, you, if you do something to me that threatens me and I pull my asp out and I start wailing on you, just, just start Pretend you're feeling the effects of these. So you start, you, start you start becoming diminished, your ability. And at some point, you're basically, just like that shield was a minute ago, you're just absorbing all these strikes. Well, at some point, you're going to need to disengage, give verbal commands, order him to the ground or whatever, but give him an opportunity to not just be a punching bag. 
He may have resisted initially, but it doesn't give, give you carte blanche to just be able to keep hitting him repeatedly. At some point, there has to be an end to it. So right. if I do give you that opportunity and you come back in again, then Game all on. bets are off. Maybe I transition to another tool. But these are some techniques that will help you when you deploy your expandable baton.